maybe shift gears a little bit from private cloud now and start talking a little bit more about big data. Big data is a, a, a big trend. We hear it quite often. And uh, the next presenters, both of them, uh, had sought out a way to solve for large amounts of data. Um, one of them co-founded a company called Object Rocket, which we acquired. And the other one uh, created a company called Sumall. So why don't we uh, bring up Chris Lalonde, the founder of Object Rocket. He's going to talk to you for just a few minutes. Welcome Chris Lalonde, please. Hi, uh, my name's Chris, um, and uh, I always like to try and share a few things about myself when I'm, when I'm talking, uh, mostly because uh, I'm an engineer, and uh, talking in front of a bunch of people isn't uh, my what comes naturally to me. Uh, so the first thing I should share with you is that uh, I'm Canadian, eh? So uh, according to Canadian statute, I have to uh, apologize at the very beginning of everything I do, so I'm, I'm sorry. Um, um, I think that, uh, that uh, you know, uh, and, and also because I'm Canadian, I'm always polite, and so my thank you for coming here this afternoon and hanging out uh, late in the day is that I only have two slides. Um, and so you won't have to put up with my Canadianisms for very long, and I probably shouldn't break out into a hockey game or anything. Um, so uh, what is Object Rocket is probably the question I get asked the most. Um, uh, I'm a, I'm a dork. Uh, I like computers a lot. And um, Object Rocket was really a response to um, sort of the lack of performance, uh, lack of sort of like solid architecture, and the sort of the lack of simplicity of the cloud, um, uh, specifically around data and databases. Um, you know, uh, it, it really started for me because I was writing a small application and um, I was just interested in writing the application. I wasn't actually interested in hosting or managing the database. Um, and as it turns out, I did what you know, everybody does. I went and spun up some servers, and, um, and I had to maintain this database when all I really wanted to do was write my app. The database was getting in the way of me actually like running my business. It took engineering resources, it took time, it took uh, a lot of effort to actually architect systems that will not only just be a database, but scale. Scale to you know, tens of millions of transactions a second. Scale to petabytes worth of data. And so Object Rocket is, in its, in its most base form, a database as a service. But I say it's a database as a service plus plus. And the plus plus is, is that it's architected from the ground up. So um, I worked at eBay for a while. And uh, you would never go and throw Oracle on a regular old web server and call that a database. That would just never, ever work. And so what we've done from the beginning at Object Rocket is we've designed a, a platform. And we support tens of millions of transactions a second and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of terabytes worth of data. Um, currently, today, we have two offerings. We have MongoDB um, and Redis. And there's lots more coming real soon now. Um, the next uh, question I get is like, what's the differentiator? Why do customers love you guys? And so uh, for me, there's four S's. There's speed, uh, safety, support, and scale. And these are all sort of the fundamental things that you, you really, really want. Um, in terms of scale, for example, our Mongo services design is inherently sharded. That means by default, you can come into the system and you literally click a button and it'll scale horizontally for you. The system automatically will go and add the, the you know, resources you need and go do all those things, start balancing the data horizontally for you. There is nothing that you have to do. By default, it's designed to scale automatically. Um, everything's redundant. I'm an engineer. So uh, yes, the network's redundant. We keep three hot copies of the data, one cold copy of the data. We have multiple data centers, infrastructure, everything is redundant on it. Again, this is all done by default. This is just what's inherent in the system. And then support, um, you know, we're part of Rackspace, and we believe very, very strongly in fanatical support. Um, as John mentioned, we were acquired, and frankly, one of the reasons that uh, we went through the acquisition was because of the fanatical support at Rackspace, because of the people. 
Um, an example of sort of what we do is that we have three what are called Mongo Masters on staff. We have more Mongo Masters than any other company in the world that are there to answer questions, to help architect, to go through these things um, for, with folks. And then um, speed. Um, as I said earlier, I think you can't just use a regular old web server to, uh, to, to go and uh, throw, some, sort of throw some database software on it and say that's OK. Um, so we've literally, from the ground up, used the most performant systems that money can buy. Um, so a customer never has to do any of that stuff. Um, that's it. Two slides, very quick. Um, I think that uh, the, the next gentleman coming up uh, is Dane Atkinson from the CEO from Samal. And Dane uh, can back me up a little bit here, I think, on, uh, on this stuff. So thank you for your time. My name is Dane Atkinson. I'm the CEO of Samal, and we are happily in Soho, New York City. So we want to bring something into the marketplace that actually allowed the creators of their own data to get it back. So they could see their own information, make better choices in their lives off their own data, and not just have it disappear into the cloud. We've been around as a product for a little over two years, and as a business for three years. Uh, we started out with getting, I don't know, a couple customers a day, and now we're doing a thousand businesses a day joining up and sticking to us. We have over 200,000 businesses actively using us, and we will have over a million, of course, the next year. We actually started just with e-commerce merchants. We started with like Shopify and Magento and those kind of partners. And then we quickly realized that this had much bigger ubiquity, so we continued to add broader and broader data streams. Amazon is good for some things, but not when you're at the sort of cutting edge of technology that we are. Um, we found huge delays in our services. And actually, I think it was about a year ago that we hit almost a breaking point in the business. We need specialists. We don't need generic, we don't need commodity, that's everywhere, right? We need somebody who can solve our hard problems, and our problems are extremely difficult. We need people who can figure out how to deliver terabytes of information in milliseconds, right? We need someone who can take 100,000 customers to 10 million customers in the span of eight months. We need people who are smart and able to figure out the next step, not the stuff that's existed for 20 years. Switching to Object Rocket and Rackspace was night and day in every angle. And from a technology standpoint, the move was fairly seamless, and it take that sort of hour onboarding time for our customers back down to seconds, um, which is where they want to be and where we need to be as a business. Woo. Hello, everybody. Hello. I'm the big guy. I've shrunk down here. I'm not Canadian, so it's going to be fast because I speak from a New York standpoint. Um, and I definitely think we're here to show the cutting edge or the prototypical small company and what it does with uh, Rackspace. So let's see. There's a big green button. Ah, there we go. Um, hmm. ah. So this is me. Um, I've run a bunch of companies. Uh, I've been a CEO for a long time, always living in the startup environment. We are a New York company, which is awesome. New York is the best tech center. I know we're still smaller compared to San Francisco. But we did get $3 billion last year in funding. And there are 1,500 startups of our kind of ilk that are trying to make a change here. So whatever for New York propaganda, you are New Yorkers. Yay, New York. Yay. Oh, whew. man, that was hard. It's a pretty picture. God. All right, so as a normal startup, we have a red wall, you know, the startup vibe. We started with a whole bunch of CEOs and CTOs. This is us about two and a half years ago, three years ago. We grew very quickly. We're now a 50-person team, which is nothing compared to the sort of gigantic monster that you'd see at Rackspace. But we do sort of live on that very, very sharp edge. We are purely engineers and geeks. We get the best minds we can because they all think our lotto tickets are going to turn to billions of dollars. Very rarely do our stock turn to billions of dollars, but they buy it, so it's great. Um, and we try to change the world, right? We take on missions that are extremely big, and we need partners that can help us change on those missions. So our company takes data from anywhere in the cloud and makes it really easy for customers to understand. So they put a username and password in, they see all their data cleaned up and nice against itself. So we are the leader in connected data. You can put in your revenue data and your social data and your traffic data, anything you want. That seems to make people really happy because they can actually see things and not spend the weekends doing reports and share what's going on and sort of connect the insights across different data sets. When you have happy customers and happy partners, you end up with really nice growth curves. So this is old. We're now past around 300,000 customers. Uh, we grow painfully quick. And unfortunately, this is just customer count. It's not actually data count. So we have this sort of compounding issue. We take in data from 60 partners. Every day, we had 1,000 businesses, and they link up five or more data sets. And every day, those data sets grow. 
So we have this nice multiplicative effect where we have data multiplied by data multiplied by data at extremely high speeds. Because our customers are small businesses, so somehow they've been trained to think everything is Google or Facebook. Like if it doesn't work in two or three seconds, they log off. So we have to take all that information and give it back to them in seconds, which means we need to find extremely smart partners, right? This is our data growth. I'll just let it sink in. For any VCs, it's up and to the right, which it's supposed to be. <laughs> um, and from a standpoint of engagement, it's been a, it's been a very interesting three years. 1,000% uh, growth is an actual real number. Got to love it. Not from the data side. It's obviously a pain in the ass, but you got to love it when it grows as fast everywhere else. Um, just to give you some sort of representation, our data grows 40% a month. That's about 30 million rows. If you printed out the data on an 8.5 by 11 at 8-point font and stacked it, every day we'll get more data than would stand across two gigantic New York buildings, right? So I think that it's very abstract for us how much information we're actually collecting. We collect more data than the stock market does in a day. And we're a three-year-old company, right? So we can go from nothing, from a boot bunch of like five or six engineers to this scale if we get the right people behind us if we can get the support to make it work, if we can scale fast enough, if it's just there. Uh, so yeah, so speed, we use Mongo. There's just nothing else that's going to work for us. We need to be able to ask questions in unstructured fashion. Mongo is a, is a bit of a <coughs> bitch. Um, it has a lot of problems. So it would be an entire company in itself to manage it. And we love Mongo. We won their awards, all that kind of stuff. But we need someone else who can sort of help us make that successful. We have huge right contention issues. We have I'd say something that breaks every month. You know, when you add 40% of your data every month, there's always a new part of the system that breaks down. And having a partner that will jump in and fix that with you, literally at any time of the day, is the real deviation between surviving and having uh, all those little Twitter fail balloons or some other, I won't mention, unsuccessful stories. Um, Hypergrowth, yeah. I think that you guys have heard a lot about the different partners out there and the way things work. Because of our discovery of Object Rocket, we fell totally in love. This is a while now for us, but I know it's, it's a kind of a cheesy slide compared to the video, but we really, really do love the Object Rocket guys. We would not exist. We would have had to ratchet down our scale. It would have to be a totally different business if we couldn't find a fashion to get to the size we are with the partner we have. So we love them. For those of you out there, we love you. Share. Forgive this graph. This was done by a, a, an engineer, so it doesn't look pretty. Um, but before we went there, we were like, let's take a look at things. Let's take our production load and throw it against Object Rocket that we have in AWS at the time. And this was sort of in year one, right? So I don't know whether that's customer count or data queries. It was very different. But we were blown away without changing any infrastructure, any code. We suddenly see a major improvement, right? This is when we knew that we had it right, that there was a speed to be had, a scale to be had with this partner. And here's another wonderful example. So this is uh, an email that happened a while ago. It happened like 4 a.m. at night, where everything collapsed and it failed. And I didn't know there was something called a Mongo master before, so we're going to ask for them in the future. But regardless, somebody answered us instantly and jumped on the problem and tried to fix it. That is really crazy, considering the amount of pressure we're under and to have that kind of support all the time and get us back up before you know it. This is a bit of a geeky slide, and I'm not as much of a geek as Chris is, so I'll try to explain it. But essentially, as you can see, we draw in data from all those third parties. We put it into our object rocket environment, and we make it available by query to all of our customers. And all of our customers get their data in in minutes, and they get it back out in seconds. That's a lot of information. Those big, gigantic buildings can press back down and go back out and down, out, down, out. Yeah. Um, lessons learned. So this is a bit about we're asked to show what we've sort of picked up in our three years of dealing with big data. Uh, good problems, what people call these giant problems, are just really high risk problems. So it's kind of fun when you're small and like, ah, oh, this is a great problem. We've got VC money. Let's figure out how to scale. Then when you're scaling with a quarter million users on your back, it's still a problem. It's a really high risk problem because if you screw it up, you kind of lost that huge ship opportunity. Um, so I think that it's, it should be understood that at this scale, there's very little margin to screw around with. So those big problems are much more high risk in some senses. Uh, so always work with the best. So I've spoken about this before. Um, I think that people don't quite get that it's not a linear curve, right? So if you try to economize by moving down that curve from uh, sucky to 100% fantastic, 
you actually do not get economies of scale. That may be the way you pay, but it's not the way you get delivery. So finding that sort of 98, 99, 100%, that gap really shoots up from a performance standpoint. So when you're in team, in your partners, you have to always religiously strive to get the very, very maximum you can, the sharpest edge possible. And last, so this is something we learned a lot um, from our friends at Object Rocket. If you can build overly resilient, it'll save your butt. So we have a kind of joke around our office that we can make mistakes because we have great partners, and it's true. We will engineer stuff, we do deploys every few hours. If something goes wrong, we have enough extra infrastructure, enough pieces in place that'll catch us. So where our engineers used to have to make sure everything was perfect, we have aligned ourselves with an ecosystem that allows us to make errors internally and that we still survive. It may explode the servers, it may make the database go, it may expand everything, but we're still there. So we can actually move at a much higher pace from an engineering standpoint than we would conventionally because there's so much extra redundancy. So whenever you can, when people say, oh, we don't need to buy extra, we don't need to put extra in, always put the extra in if you want to move fast because you'll need it. It's a rainy day policy. So those are my slides, and I do want to reshare that we love the Object Rocket Rackspace guys, so thank you very much.